Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to resurface a concrete patio. And in this case, specifically, it's a concrete pool deck. So, what I'm doing is here, I'm just cleaning off the residual dust. And what we did to prepare for the resurfacing was we actually ground the concrete with a 5 inch DeWalt concrete grinder. And the concrete was in pretty good shape. It was just a little dirty, had some mold and mildew on it. And we, you know, we always carry a, a DeWalt grinder with us. So that was, for us, that was the easiest way to clean it. Now you could have just pressure washed it and that would have been plenty good enough to clean this too. Um, but for us, just grinding it's easy. So I'm just br brushing off the residual dust right now and, you know, scrubbing off any little bit last of dirt, getting that off. Now, if you don't know me, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors. Floors. My channel's all about concrete work. We specialize in concrete floors and slabs and pool decks, patios, stamp concrete. Uh, we do a lot of concrete repair, resurfacing like this. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. I come out with a couple videos a week. Um, hit the hit the bell notification, and that way you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. So this is going to be part of a, a brand new pool deck we're pouring around the rest of this thing. This this part of the concrete was existing, you know, it had a slide attached to it. So we wanted to make this piece look like new also. And that's why we're resurfacing this little piece. We'll be pouring the new pool deck here coming up pretty soon. But we just wanted to get this done and out of the way before we did the new concrete. So I've just about got this thing brushed off. I'm going to get whatever last little bit of dust is off it. And then we're going to get to resurfacing this thing. What we're using is, for a resurfacer, is we're using Rapid Set's Nucrete Concrete Resurfacer to do this. Um, this product is pretty easy to use. And you can get it right at Home Depot. So it's, it's also pretty local to most of you guys. I also have a link for it down in the description if you want to just click on the link and get it. But uh, we like this product. Like I said, it's easy to use. It, it mixes up real easy. All you need is a, is a paddle mixer, you know, an electric drill with a with a mixing paddle. And you can buy it by the box. It's, it's a 25-pound box. It takes about two and a half to three quarts of water to mix it all up. And it goes down like pancake batter. You'll see this in a minute. So, I mean, all the tools you'll need basically to, to resurface a piece of concrete like this is a hand trowel. You see my hand trowel over there on the pool deck coping. Or you could use just a big putty knife also. And then a broom, a nice fine broom like you see we have there. So right now I got Darren. There's Darren there. He was mixing the product for me. We mixed, we mixed the whole box at once for this. It's got, you know, you got quite a bit of working time with this stuff, especially if it's a... If it's a day where you're in the shade, I mean, if it's 90 degrees out and you're out in the sun, that's probably not the best time to use this stuff. You know, you want it to be kind of cool, even in the shades, even better. But you'll have, you know, 20 to 30 minutes working time with this stuff. And what happened with us is it rained the night before here. So we knew that concrete had a lot of moisture in it, which is, which is good. I mean, it's, if it doesn't, if it's really, really dry out and you're out in the sun, you might want to slightly dampen the slab first before you put this stuff down. And you can do that a few ways. You could just mist it with a hose. Um, you could you could use a little pump-up sprayer and just mist some water on it. And again, you just want to mist it on. You just want to dampen it. You don't want any puddles. Or you could even take a sponge in a bucket and just kind of slightly sponge some water on the slab to get it damp and then put this resurfacer down right after it. But for us, it rained the night before, so we felt there was enough moisture in the slab for us. And there was, this stuff went down just like butter pretty much for us. So I'm working it around the, the slide there, as you can see, pretty tight quarters there. And you know, when you're always working around objects, it always slows you down a little bit. But with this product, you know, you want to trial it on about a sixteenth of an inch. And then as soon as you get it trialed on, you want to broom right over it. You don't want to wait. You just want to broom right over it wet. And that'll leave you a nice looking broom mark. 
if you leave it too long, you know, the stuff's going to dry up on you and, and you're not going to get a very good broom mark in it. So you can see Eric there with the broom. He's, as soon as I get a piece done, he's getting the broom to it. And I'm getting around, trying to get around that ladder as fast as I can, but I want to make sure I get really good coverage over that existing slab. Now this slab, we didn't really have any repairs to do. There wasn't any spalling. There wasn't any cracks to fix. If there was, if there was some spalling or some divots or chips out of it, then you're going to want to patch those first. And you can use the same product. You just mix up a little bit in a cup and patch over them. Let that dry. And then you can just sand them smooth or take like a, a little rubbing stone and, and rub them smooth before you go ahead and resurface like I'm doing here. You can see there, I'm troweling the stuff down. I didn't put any tape on the coping to start with, so I, that slowed me down a little bit. And Darren, Darren was a good man. He went and got some tape and taped up the rest of that coping so I wouldn't have to be quite so fussy up against it. So that just helps speed things up too. As we get around that ladder, we'll be able to move a little quicker. You can see Eric's pulling that broom right over it. And then after he pulls the broom over it, you want to you wanna clean the bristles. You can do that just by scraping them. You could dip it in a bucket of water and then, uh, you know, kind of pound the water out of the bristles before you make your next pass. But the cleaner you can keep the bristles on the broom, the better looking the broom finish you'll get. So you can see that's just a, like a pancake batter consistency. So that trials down really easily. It spreads out really easy. This product's a really good product. We've used this on multiple resurfacing products and it, it lasts really, really good. It goes, you know, it takes, I live in Maine, so we get, go through a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. And, you know, this stuff, this stuff takes those harsh winters and it lasts really good. That's why we like using it. I'm getting a little I'm getting to an area now where I can work a little bit faster. You can see how I move that stuff back and forth and then Eric comes right behind me with the broom. You could you could do this yourself. If I was doing this myself, I'd probably trowel out about two widths of that broom. That broom's two feet, so I'd trowel out about four feet, then I'd broom it, and then I'd trowel out another four feet, and then I'd broom it. But it's definitely easier having an extra hand doing this. Especially if you're working around things like this. If this was wide open, you know, this would be going down twice as fast. But you want to keep the consistency right at about, you know, a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. You don't want to put this stuff on too thick because the broom marks will look different. And you don't need to get it on too thin. I mean, you want good coverage. And you want it all to look nice and consistent. So between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch is plenty. And you're going to get about, at that thickness, you're probably going to get right around 70 square feet out of a box. 70, 75 square feet out of a box. Which is just about what this was. This was, this was 5 by 13, I think, if on average. So it was just about 65 to 70 square feet. So we only had to mix up one batch for this. When this stuff dries, it's going to dry a really light gray. So, and it's all going to dry evenly too. It won't look blotchy or nothing. So as it starts to dry, you can kind of see right by the, right by the ladder, it's starting to turn light gray a little bit already. That's the product starting to dry. So it's eventually all going to dry out and look like that. And then, I mean, you can, you could, I mean, on a 70 degree day, you could walk on this in a couple hours. So if you're doing an area that has a lot of foot traffic or like in, in front of a storefront or something like that, and you got to put it right back in use, I mean, by the time you put it down and, and give it a couple hours, you're going to be able to put it right back to use again. So there'll be very little downtime. 
you know, in front of a commercial application or a storefront or something like that. This guy had a wood deck around his pool, except for this piece. So he took out all the wood and, you know, regraded the dirt, put the styrofoam down, and then we came in. We, we're going to form up. We started forming it already, but we're going to form up around the pool, which is an, it's an octagon pool, and then form a brand new deck, so it's all going to look brand new. We'll put the rebar to it and the concrete to it, and then it's going to have a brand new pool deck. So I'm getting right down to the end. You can see this. This really didn't take us too long. All in all, from start to finish, you know, getting around all these objects, this took us about 20, 25 minutes, I think, to do this entire thing. Now, if you had a larger area to do, you'd want to do it in sections. So, you know, hopefully you'd have some saw cuts to go by or, you know, some existing groove marks to go by or something and do it in sections. But unless you had more people to help, But this small thing, this thing was pretty easy, so we didn't have to stop or, or break it into two pieces or nothing. So that's how you resurface concrete, guys. You know, Rapid Sets, Newcrete, uh, it's a really good product. Like I said, I'll have a link for it down in the description if you guys want to get it and check it out and try it. Um, I know a lot of you have old concrete that's just worn or spalled or just needs repair. And, uh, you know, this is the product you're going to want to use for that. So uh, check it out, try it, and uh, get back to me in the comments. Let me know if it's something you've used or something you could use or something you think you could do on your own. Thanks for watching, guys.